Welcome back everybody, this is Ari, I'll be your host for today. And in this screencast, what we're gonna talk about is batch rendering, dynamically timed compositions. There are a few gotchas which make it a little bit different from regular batch rendering, which you can watch a screencast that we have currently from an older version of Templator. But in this version, we're gonna discuss batch rendering in the context of dynamic timelines. That is when your target compositions that you wanna render out change in duration. So let's take a look at what these gotchas are all about and how we can solve them. Okay, let's get started. Now, this composition has a dynamic timeline. And what that means is that every time the footage sources change, Templator will then adjust the composition's duration. All right, let's go ahead and verify. If we select all these and hit E on our keyboard, we can see that they all have the Templator settings effect on them. So these are definitely dynamic. Now, if we select this one and then double click its Templator settings controls, we can see that the comp ends at out point parameter is checked. So if I hit preview, all of these layers get updated, they all shift around, and then the composition changes duration. So I'm gonna to go to the end of the comp. We can see it's 20 seconds and 18 frames long. So if I hit preview to go to the next row in our data set, you're gonna see these layers change out. And now the timeline indicator is still at the end, but the composition is 16 seconds and 18 frames long. Likewise, if I do it again, and I have to zoom out this time in the timeline, we can go all the way to the end and see that this is 38 seconds and 18 frames long. So now what we're gonna do is render out a batch of videos based off of some of the rows in our spreadsheet that's connected to this project. And if we go over to the Google spreadsheet, I'm gonna go ahead and just render rows 11, 12, and 13. So I go back into AE and I enter in 11 for the start row and then 13 for the end row. All right, so what we're gonna do now is actually perform the render. But before we do the render, Templator needs to know which composition from the project should be rendered out. So we choose what's called a target composition. So we go to preferences and we're just gonna render the segments composition out, click okay. Okay, so we're almost set to render, but before we do that, let's go ahead and observe one small tiny thing that may be overlooked when rendering out a composition with a dynamic timeline, and that is the work area. So in many cases, you'll be working in your composition and you might focus on a specific work area in your timeline. So for example, you know, we could cut down the work area to here or even shorter like that. And if I hit preview, for the next row, you'll see this work area maintain. It doesn't really change all that much. Okay, so if your render settings template does not specify to render the entire duration of the composition, that will be a problem for your output. Now to show you, what we'll do is we'll just select draft settings from our template dropdown here, and we're gonna go ahead and do render. And what you're gonna see is Templator load up the target composition into the render queue and render it out. So let's let it go through its thing and check out the output once it's done. Okay, so let's go ahead and check out the output. We've got our finder over here and we can see here are our three videos and they have the composition name prepended to the ID and we did render out as QuickTime. So let's take a look at this one. If I preview this, you can see that the duration is only five seconds long. And then likewise for this one, it's also five seconds. So that's a, that's a problem because our timeline is changing duration and this obviously isn't gonna work out. So what we need to do is create a render settings template within AE and use that template. And the template needs to specify that the whole composition should get rendered, not just the work area. So let's see how we can do that. So what we're gonna do is go to our edit menu in After Effects, go to templates down here, and then click on render settings. Now, what we wanna do is create a new settings. So we click on new, and we're gonna just make sure it's draft because we're doing a demo here. And for resolution, let's just go ahead and do a third, that's fine. And then what we'll do is for time span, instead of work area only, what we're gonna do is select length of comp. 
Okay, so we're gonna ignore these for now. And let's go ahead and name this render settings template. We'll call this draft comp. Click OK. All right, so now After Effects has accessibility to that render settings, but Templator doesn't. So what we do is we go to the Templator panel and click Refresh. And now if we look at this drop down here, we can see that our draft comp item is in the menu. So we're gonna select that. And for output, we're gonna go ahead and go back to the QuickTime H.264 at 100%. Now that we've got this template and this output module, we don't have to worry about what's going on with the work area here. So let's see what happens when we render it out. All right, so let's take a look at our output. Our finder is right over here, and here are the three outputs from our render batch. So if I take a look at this one, you can see that the entire video is now rendered out rather than just the work area. And that's a result of setting the render settings template to render the length of the comp rather than just the, the work area. So you can see here, this is 34 seconds. This one is going to be 38 seconds long. And then this one is, I believe it's 22, 22 seconds long. Okay, so don't forget to render out the entire length of the composition in your render settings template when you work with dynamically changing composition timelines. Okay, so we're gonna go back to After Effects. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the replicate function rather than the render function. So before we start that, we wanna be sure that all of our replicates are exporting to the Adobe Media Encoder. So let's take a look. We click on the Preferences dialog and we can see here under the Replication group, we've got Send Replicates to Adobe Media Encoder. So I'm gonna enable that and click OK. Now, one other thing that I need to do is make sure that the Adobe Media Encoder has a watch folder that points to Templator's output folder. So let me show you exactly what I'm talking about. All right, I'm gonna bring up my Adobe Media Encoder application. It's right here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring up the watch folder panel. So we're just gonna go to Window, Watch Folders. So what we do is we hit this plus button in the watch folders panel. Click plus, and lucky for us, this is the exact same output folder as in Templator. So I click Choose, and here you can see the full path. Now, if we look a little closer, you can see that the Media Encoder has this output folder column here, and this is where all the encoded files actually end up. And this is a little bit confusing, so I'm gonna go ahead and change this. I'm gonna click here, and I'm gonna go up a level, create a new folder, and call this Encoded. Okay, so I hit Choose. Now I'm gonna go back into After Effects and run the replica job. So I go to my Templator panel and I click the Replicate button. Now, when I do this, I'm gonna go over to the Output folder so we can see what After Effects is actually doing. Okay, so let's hop on over here. And what we're seeing here are replicate files of the master template file. So because these exist in the Output folder and because the Adobe Media Encoder is watching that Output folder, we should be able to see those files queue up here. And in fact, there they go. Here is the first one. And we can see here that the file name is keeping in line with the way that Templator creates the file name. So here is segments prepended with the ID. So there are the three files. Now I can hit play. What's gonna happen is the media encoder will now encode those replicate after Effects project files that have the data from the spreadsheet. So let's take a look. Awesome. Let's go to the output folder and check out those files. So let's make these icons just a little bit bigger. Okay. Now, if we check this out, we should see that it in fact plays from the beginning and of the entire composition all the way through to the end. And likewise here, we've got this one, which is a different duration, 38 seconds. And then this one is 22 seconds long. All right, so we're gonna go back into AE and we see that the Adobe Media Encoder rendered the entire length of the composition, even though the target composition 
has a work area span that is not the entire length of the comp. So the way that Adobe Media Encoder realizes that is through one of these two parameters here. So if any of the layers in the composition have either of these enabled, then Adobe Media Encoder assumes to render the entire length of the composition. If no layers have these checked, then when you replicate, the Adobe Media Encoder will render the work area in your target comp. All right, well, thanks for joining me, and I'm glad to have shown you those two gotchas for when you do those batch renders. So that concludes our screencast on batch rendering dynamic timelines. Don't forget to click to subscribe to our channel so you can learn the latest techniques for automating your video production process. I'm Ari Stapchansky, signing off. Thanks again. Thank you.